Hello everyone, let's try to quickly recall all the previous year topics from anatomy. It took quite some hours to prepare the slides, but definitely it's going to be worth it. This is Dr. Araraj and now let's try to quickly and thoroughly revise the upcoming topics. Look at the marked area here. This is called as tedion. It is going to be located between the parietal bone, frontal bone, spinoid bone and the temporal bone. Remember, there is a very important artery which passes through it. It is called as middle meningeal artery. Look at the marked area here. This is called as what? Bregma. We all know this is going to be the frontal bone, the parietal bone and the occipital bone. The suture between the frontal and the parietal is called as what? Coronal suture. And this is going to be the sagittal suture. And the one down here is going to be the lambdoid suture. Great. Let's revise the carpal bones. Carpal bones comes with a mnemonic. She looks too pretty. Try to catch a yes is for scaphoid, L is for lunate, T is for trigetral, P for fissiform. This is going to be trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. Remember, scaphoid is the most commonly fractured bone in the carpal area, and lunate is going to be the most commonly dislocated carpal bone. Let's revise the tarsal bone with just three letters C, C, T, N. Yes, this is going to be calcaneum. This one is going to be cuboid. The one here is going to be cuneiform. It has the medial cuneiform, intermediate cuneiform and the lateral cuneiform. The one up here is going to be the talus and this is going to be the navicular. That's it. Just remember with three letters C, C, C and T, N. Let's go. Let's look at the stratified squamous epithelium. They are further classified into keratinized and non-keratinized. The keratinized one, the nucleus is going to become more flattened as they go upward towards the top layer. Here we can hardly see the nucleus because they are flattened. Whereas in non-keratinized, we can still see the nucleus on the top layers. This is how you are going to differentiate between the non-keratinized and keratinized. Non-keratinized are going to be commonly seen in the esophagus and vagina. Whereas the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium is going to be seen in the skin. Look at the image here. This is going to be the transitional epithelium. The nucleus over here is also seen at the same size. They are not going to be flattened. And they are going to have big cells called as the umbrella cells. Very important to remember for the exam. Umbrella cells are classically seen in transitional epithelium. And the image here, this is going to be ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. They are going to have what? Single cell layers and also they are going to have flagella here. So if you see the flagella at the top layer, that is going to be what? Pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. Very good. Let's look at the abdominal region. There are going to be nine quadrants. Let's start with the umbilicus. This is called as what? Umbilical region. Just above here is going to be the stomach. It is called as epigastric region. And down below is going to be the hypogastrium. Towards the left side and the right side are going to be the right hypochondrium and left hypochondrium. And this is going to be the lumbar. And here we are going to have the right iliac region and the left iliac region. Nice. For the main exam, you are going to remember two important planes. They are going to be the trabecular plane and the subcostal plane. Remember, trabecular plane lies at the level of L5. Remember L5. Whereas the subcostal is going to be at the level of L3. Remember L3. And these two planes are called as what? Mid clavicular planes. Mid clavicular plane. Now, the diaphragm opening. Remember, this is going to be come with a mnemonic V O A. V is for the vena cava, O for esophagus, and A for iota. Remember, at the diaphragm, they are going to be at the level of T8. Vena cava at T8, esophagus at T10, and iota at T12. Remember, the aortic opening is going to be having the iota passing through it, the thoracic duct, and the azygous vein. Look at the beautiful eye here, but you are going to focus on the lacrimal sac and the lacrimal gland. Remember, the lacrimal sac is located towards the medial wall and the lacrimal gland is located towards the lateral wall. 
let's look at the nose the nose as the first part is going to be the upper part it is going to be composing of bone and down below two third of the nose is composed of what cartilage very important to be revised for the main exam now let's revise the important muscles and the joints the muscle over here it is called as what supraspinatus and if the examiner shows you a muscle at this region this is going to be infraspinatus infraspinatus remember the supraspinatus is going to be for 0 to 50 degree abduction great the muscle over here this is called as what the deltoid muscle and it is going to be helpful for abduction for about 15 to 90 degree the next is going to be the syndesmosis joint here this is going to be in between the tibia and fibula so therefore it is called as tibio fibular joint and the similar joint is present between the radius and ulnar it is called as middle radio ulnar joint now the joint between the skull bone this is called as what these are called as sutures so remember the muscles and important joint names now let's try to revise some interesting facts and important facts about clavicle remember the clavicle is the only horizontal long bone it is the first bone to ossify and also the last bone to complete ossification now regarding the humerus this is going to be the humerus bone we are going to remember the nerves here the nerve at the surgical neck of the humerus is called as what the axillary nerve yes and the nerve at the radial groove or the shaft this is called as what the radial nerve and also remember very important for the exam at the medial epicondyle at the medial epicondyle it is going to be supplied by ulnar nerve very important for the exam to be revised the brachial artery is a very ideal topic the brachial artery actually goes down till the cubital fossa point number 1 and the second point is at the radial neck it divides into the radial artery and ulnar artery remember the third point if the arm is pulseless it means it could be brachial artery injury next here this is going to be the popliteal artery this is the popliteal artery and this is going to be our fibular artery also remember the popliteal artery when someone palpates at this region towards the medial part of the foot it is for posterior tibial artery palpation look at the large muscle over here this is going to be what the genioglossus you are going to remember three important point number one is going to be it is the largest muscle of the tongue number two is going to be it is the safety muscle of the tongue and number three it is going to prevent the tongue from falling back very important remember genioglossus and the image over here this is going to be cdh congenital diaphragmatic hernia now it is due to the absence of pleuroperitoneal membrane remember due to the absence of pleuroperitoneal membrane and this is going to be the radiological image for cdh it is further classified into two types one is going to be bostellak hernia and morgagni hernia remember bostellak is going to be most common of about 90% and it is going to be at the back of the diaphragm whereas morgagni is going to be a hole at the front of the diaphragm the image over here is going to be what the cleft lip yes it is due to the abnormal fusion of the maxillary and the medial nasal process it is going to be classically seen in trisomy 13 which is going to be patau syndrome patau syndrome remember lip it finishes also with p and patau starts with p the second image here this is going to be bell's palsy it is a lower motor neuron lesion it is going to be affected on the same side i.e the ipsilateral side and it is also going to include the forehead muscles and you are going to see facial nerve involvement 
let's revise the sagittal section of the brain let's focus on the eye yield points number one this is going to be cerebrum this area is going to be what the cerebrum and this is going to be our corpus callosum yes and this is going to be what the midbrain this is going to be pons and here we have the medulla and this region here this is called as what the cerebellum let's identify the same with the radiological images i hope you are going to be the one who is going to answer what is this this is the cerebrum yes and the c shape one this is got as what corpus callosum and this is going to be what the midbrain and here we have the try to recall this is going to be the pons and down below here we have the medulla and this region here over here is called as what cerebellum and there is an important ventricle here this is going to be the fourth ventricle located here these were all the ideal images for anatomy i hope you revise it well all your hard work is going to be paid off very soon you're going to have a glorified life in just after a few days maintain the pace love you all until next video cheers